back. Challenging and exhilarating times await Harry Potter as he returns to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire is the eagerly awaited fourth film adaptation in J.K. Rowling's phenomenally successful series and looks set to smash more box office records. Now, the world behind the scenes of the Harry Potter movies has always been a really closely guarded secret. Until now, that is. For the first time ever, the film's producers have invited TV cameras into that world. But not any old cameras, just ours. Which means that we get to go behind the scenes to see stuff that no one in the world has seen before. Which, if you ask me, is pretty exciting. So, this is where it all happens. Over there, the glamorous hotspot of Watford. And over here, Leafson Studios. It doesn't look like much from the outside. Just a drafty old aircraft hangar with some peeing paint, the odd missing towel. But inside, it's a very different story. All sorts of weird and wonderful things are going on in there. There's flying broomsticks, there's fire-breathing dragons, there's mermaids, and of course, some hardcore magic. Believe it or not, this place is home to a global phenomenon. We'll be taking a look behind the magic of some of the most breathtaking and heart-stopping scenes in movie history. Following Daniel Radcliffe's gruelling training for the most incredible underwater sequence. Meeting the design and visual effects teams who bring these mind-blowing ideas to life. And finding out what happens when Harry comes face to face with a vicious fire-breathing dragon. But first, I need to get inside. Amongst all this fantastic set is the port key. It's an object that transports wizards from one place to another at a prearranged time. This is the very thing. Now, of course, I'm not a wizard, so you're just going to have to excuse a bit of good old-fashioned TV trickery. I can't believe that worked. We're actually here. I'm actually inside the office of esteemed Hogwarts headmaster, Albus Dumbledore. It is just awesome. Look at the paintings. Hedwig's here, keeping an eye on us. Guarding the big man's desk. I've got to try his chair, haven't I? What do you reckon? Sit down. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I could get very used to this. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire is another Potter epic. The story starts at the Quidditch World Cup, but the excitement of the occasion is destroyed when a group of Voldemort's most loyal and faithful supporters attack the event's campsite. This can only mean one thing. Voldemort is gaining in strength and grave danger is lurking in the wizarding world. Back at Hogwarts, the students discover that this school year will be very different. Hogwarts has been chosen to host a legendary event, the Tri-Wizard Tournament. Two schools will be joining Hogwarts in the tournament, the sophisticated and graceful Beau Batons and the stoical young men of the Durmstrang Institute. From each of the three schools, a single student is chosen by the Goblet of Fire to take part in a series of dangerous magical contests. And because of this danger, contestants must be over 17 years old. One of the totally unexpected things that does happen, however, is that Harry's name is pulled out of the Goblet of Fire when he's A, underage, and B, he didn't even submit his name. And so he's entered in this tournament. He doesn't know who by. And of course he is lying. The hell he is. And it transpires that whoever entered him in the tournament had a, a kind of entirely a sinister motive in doing so. The God of the Fire is an exceptionally powerful magical object. Only an exceptionally powerful confounder's charm could have hoodwinked it. Magic way beyond the talents of a fourth year. And so the whole film is it's about Harry trying to find out who that is mm. while competing in the tournament. And also, I think it's about the fact that Harry's life is no longer in his control, as he would like it to be in this film. I didn't put my name in that cup. I don't want eternal glory. I just want to be... Look, I don't know what happened tonight, and I don't know why. It just did. Okay? The film's taken over a year to make and involved more than a thousand people in its production. Action! But how do you go about turning a book that's over 600 pages long into this?
it, it is a challenge, absolutely. I mean, the books are not getting shorter. The fourth <laughs> book is the longest book of all. The book is that thick. The book mm. is nearly twice as, as long as any of the other books. What you have to be able to do is to see a way of compressing this huge book into the compass of a movie. So I read the book very carefully with that in mind um, and felt that there was a way of doing it if you were to think of it as a thriller. The journey is Harry's journey. He is our central character. And what we have ultimately done is cast aside or put aside for the moment anything that doesn't relate to Harry and Harry's journey. That's not to say there aren't subplots and other things that come in, but at its heart, it is Harry's film. The films leave out a lot. They do. And there are all sorts of little touches and little conversations. If you put them all in, it would be a 17-hour film. The approach that I take is to make a film that I will love, mm. um, that as a fan of the books, that I will love. And I think everybody who works on the films shares that passion and feels that way. And if we collectively make a film that we love, then we're being responsible to the audience. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire sees a host of new characters, and for the first time in full human form, Harry's arch enemy Voldemort. But there's another new enemy to battle in this film. Hormones. Well, I suppose we're all sort of growing up now and it's more of that, like, who you can't go ask for this ball thing. You know, that, 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 Daniel's on set. Harry Potter himself is actually here. This is the big no, scene. They're about to go for a take where Harry actually asks Cho out to the ball. Action! Harry meets his girl Cho. Well, he kind of... I say meet, he stares vacantly at her <laughs> and giggles like a moron, and um, which I could do very well. Um, watch yourself on stairs, it's a bit easy at the top. Okay, thanks. They're just getting beyond the stage where it's giggles, you know, where somebody's kissing someone, someone's holding hand. There's most certainly still a lot of note passing and a lot of going on and a lot of, you know, so-and-sos with so-and-so, you know, a lot of little dramas, yes. little stories taking place on the set or behind the scenes, <laughs> none of which I'm going to talk about now. But I think, truthfully, they're each entering a stage where they are aware of the opposite sex. Well, Hermione, you're a girl. You know, most heroes in films are always, they always get the girl, and it's great because he doesn't. And in fact, sorry, well, he might do. Well, he might film. After the break, see the amazing transformation of the Great Hall into a sparkling winter wonderland. We unleash the secrets behind this incredible fire-breathing dragon and find out who is going out with who. Yeah. Yeah, I think it quite suits me. Oh, I could do without the headache, though. I'll see you after the break.